Hello. Welcome to module 6, the penultimate module. This one is titled Negotiate as if your life depended on it. Very strong title. And we're going to focus on negotiation in this module. It's divided into three parts, as usual. And we'll just go from describing concepts to actual negotiation skills. This was inspired by a book written by a hostage negotiator for one of these uh, international agencies. The reference is in the last slide and you can look at it and uh, get the book if you like. Now, let's go to part one, superior negotiation skills. Let's just talk about some of the skills, some of the concepts. The first thing I'll do here is to quote Herb Cohen and I agree 100%. Power is based on perception. If you think you got it, you got it. Even if you don't got it. It's just verbatim. The way he said it, that's how I've quoted him. Power is based on perception. If you think you got it, you got it. Even if you don't got it. All right? So the same way it goes with negotiations. If you think you have control, you have it. If you think you don't have control, you actually don't have it. In hostage situations, in sales situations, in life situations, negotiations happen every day. Every day in life situations. Look at the screen. Who is wrong? This guy on the left is seen number six. The guy on the right is seen number nine. But who is wrong? That's how negotiation is. The truth is there are times that both parties are right. And then there are times that both parties are wrong. But it's just that to convince the other person to see it from your perspective, that is where you then need skills to do that so that you don't become argumentative or something else. So you need to learn these essential skills in selling. Why are negotiations difficult? Let me tell you, very simple. And here's where a lot of people miss it. 100% of negotiations, interests are always hidden, but position are always established. Let me use a very simple analogy. If I have content in my phone, for instance, that I know could be incriminating and you are asking me for my phone, will I give you? The answer is no. But will I tell you that, ah, what I have in the phone is incriminating? Will I ever tell you that? The answer is no. I will tell you that, ah, no, no, no. I think my phone is a private thing. I would really want to share my pain with you so that you can access my phone. It's, it's private. That is my position, that giving you my access to my phone, you could evade my privacy. But the truth is, the real reason is because of my interest that I'm protecting, which is the incriminating evidences that are in my phone. That's how negotiations are. With women, with men, with a, a guy asking a lady out, it's all negotiations. The interest is why they are saying what they are saying. Position is what they are saying but the interest is why they are saying it. So, to become an expert negotiator, you must look for every reason, every way possible to understand their why. Once you can understand the interest, it's easy for you to negotiate and come to an agreement. I don't like compromises. Compromises are like wearing a brown and a black shoe. It never works. But when you come to an agreement that, okay, this is where I want to be and this is why I want you to be here, because if you are here, this your fear, this your interest is also protected in this way. Then the person comes to you. Or if the person explains otherwise, you move to them. You are not going to come to the middle. No. If you come to the middle, you'll be wearing a brown and a black shoe. And going out, you will look stupid. Alright? So I don't want to do that. So let's move quickly. Before any negotiations, there are things you must do. One, preparation is key. You see, even if you did not prepare for your presentation, when you are going for a negotiations meeting, you must prepare. You can't afford not to prepare. You have to establish your partner. All of these concepts, we'll talk about them. We'll define them in the next slide. You establish your cost of no, your CNA. Now, three things you must do. Understand yourself, understand the other person, and then understand the situation. You must be prepared in those three levels. Three realms of preparation for negotiation. Understand yourself, self-preparation, understand the other and then understand the situation now to understand the other you must try and establish their interest 
why are they maintaining the position they are maintaining usually interest can fall within four areas either scarcity ideology necessity or opportunity so people maintain certain stance because something is scarce when i served in Inquara state in Lauren, i had some neighbors that were very uptight with core members you know very uptight with core members Eventually, after staying a while, I got to know that previous core members that had stayed in that lodge were very dubious, very wayward and frivolous, and then some of them didn't pay up their debt before they traveled. So when that particular neighbor was being hostile to me, it was because of scarcity. In the past, there has been scarcity of integrity. So she just thought that, oh, core members are people that don't have integrity. So she just put me in that bracket and the one for ideology ideology is the people maintain certain positions just because they think that's how it is no other reason they just think that oh it's based on what it is a woman can never convince me to buy anything so they are just being stubborn just because you're a woman so that's ideology you must establish that there's some out of necessity their, their bosses have told them that see you can't come back to me that with anything lower than this so when they are maintaining that position they don't want to tell you that it's their boss that are giving them ultimatum but they just are maintaining it you have to f- figure that, that there's why some opportunity they just think that oh people you are weak you are weak or you are desperate so they just start negotiation and maintaining certain positions now what i always advise is if you know you are strong in this game after you have taken this course you should be strong in the game of negotiation be the first person to make an offer and then if their counter offer is low restate your value so basically, let's not waste the whole time here because there's a lot to learn. There are stages in negotiation. There is preparation, there is discussion, there is clarification of goals, the negotiation towards a win-win outcome, there is the agreement, and finally the implementation of the agreed course of action. Those are the six stages of negotiation. Now, let's just look at some concepts in negotiation. BATNA is the best alternative to negotiated agreement. BATNA. That is the concept of last price. Ah, Aboki, what will be your last price? That is that concept. That's BATNA. So at the end of the day, you see that everyone does negotiation, right? The guy tells you that, oh, no, this thing is 2,000 naira, a, a tuba of yam, 2,000. You say, ah, ah, that's too expensive now. Why? Then you give a counter offer. Make I give you one, two. And then the guy says, ah, no, 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 no. One, two is not enough. The next thing, either you are pretending to go, I'll talk about that pretending to go, is one of the leverages that people use. Or that's okay, what's your last price? Then the guy will tell you his last price. So that's your best alternative too. So basically, just all you you telling the person that see the last price I can pay is X. So that's the concept. The next one is what now? The what now is the worst alternative to a negotiated agreement. Meaning, what is the worst cost of action you will take if the agreement does not pull through? You have to know this so that when you are in that conversation, you know the worst thing that can ever happen the worst position that you can maintain then the next one is cost of no agreement what is the cost of no agreement meaning if the guy does not agree what would you lose your landlord says he's increasing rent by 10 percent and you are protesting you are protesting and eventually said see whether you like it or not i'm going to increase this rate by 10 percent if you don't agree to that 10 percent of the landlord what are you going to lose what do you stand to lose your comfort because you move out of the house to another apartment you lose your friends that you have established in the neighborhood you lose extra money to pay 10 percent agency and 10 percent agreement so when you put all of those costs together you ask yourself is it worth it the answer is no you that 10 percent increase that you have you'd rather stay there not in all cases though the last one is zopa which is a zone of possible agreement zone of possible agreement meaning if your counterpart says x will i agree if he says why, will I agree? So it's a zone and all of that. Take note of this because some of these things are in my quiz. Let me come out. That takes us to part two. Part two is now going into the negotiations proper, the skills of winning every negotiation. So rules of the thumb, just for you to know, one or two rules. Some of the things that you should put at the back of your mind or at the front is a good negotiator prepares. Going in to be ready for possible surprises, a good negotiator aims to use her skills or his skills to reveal, not conceal. So your job is to unravel, to go and expose, reveal stuff that will make the other party to bend towards you or you gather data to bend towards them. Now, 
always put a smile on your face when you are negotiating the person says ah that is so expensive just smile and give a counter proposal don't be too rigid i always advise people that there are several paradigms when it comes to negotiation there is the win-win paradigm which i encourage people to go for win-win let the other person win you also win or then there is the win-lose which is the paradigm of my own is i just want to win i don't care if you lose or not then there is the lose win and a lot of people do this in those days our mothers did a lot of this they sold their wrappers to send us to school they slept hungry so that we could eat things like that is the lose win mindset so this is one of the mindsets but i don't encourage people to go there there is the lose lose the lose lose paradigm is PG. if i don't get it no other person will get it they'll just cut out that's how some people are and then there is the win paradigm meaning I only care about my win. I don't know if the other person will win or not. It's none of my business. The final one is win-win or no deal. Sometimes it's just the extreme of win-win, where you make sure that the other person win at all costs. Sometimes making sure the other person win at all costs can come at a cost, actually. It may throw you into the lose side of the divide. So these are the paradigms. I need you to take note of this. In every negotiation, there are six outcomes that can happen. So for me, I always encourage the win-win paradigm. Now, there are nine tactics I'm going to teach you that can help you win every negotiation session that you get into. First one, be a mirror. Be a mirror. T, always try and insinuate similarity. Remember when I was talking about a prospecting, I told you how you have to look for similarities. That's why LinkedIn is very excellent for this. When they find the person on LinkedIn, look for the connections both of you have together and talk about one of them that the person may have posted about recently. Talk about one of them. Start to mirror the person. Here's how to mirror someone successfully. There are five steps. One, use the late FM DJ voice. Try to do it now. Use the late FM DJ voice. Something soft but bold. And then you can start with, I'm sorry. So, for instance, the person tells you that, ah, the prices are too expensive. Your prices are just too high. I don't think I can continue with this. You then repeat the last three words. Say, I'm sorry, did you say you can't continue with this? Usually, the person will back off. Say, ah, no, no, but it's just that the prices are too high. I'm sorry, did you say the prices are too high? You repeat their last three words in form of a question just to help them to bring them out of where they are into the open as it were and then sometimes you practice silence when you ask that question you keep quiet for four seconds keep quiet for four seconds and then repeat this process over and over again in the course of the negotiation that's just number one now never forget the power of silence that massively disconcerting pause which goes on and on and may last induce an opponent to either babble or backtrack nervously. That's a quote from Lance Monroe, a very superb negotiator. The next tactics is don't feel their pain, label it. Don't feel their pain. It's called tactical empathy. Tactical empathy is when you understand the other person's emotion and then you say it back to them in a respectful way. So someone's telling you, your prices are too high. And you say to them, sir, what I can hear you say is that this is beyond the budget you have for land. At that point, the person says, say, yes. So you say, okay, so what exactly is your budget? So that I know if maybe another estate can work for you. All right? You practice tactical, you label it. The person saying your prices are too high is because you cannot afford it. So you now say, oh, is this beyond your budget? Can you afford it? You say it respectfully so that you don't say, ah, are you broke? No, that's not what I'm saying. Label it does not mean you become rude. Label it simply means say it in a way that is saying the right thing. So, sir, it sounds to me that you are saying this is beyond your budget, sir. Is that correct? And the person says, yes, it's beyond my budget. So, okay, so, what exactly is your budget? So, I know how to help you. Because we have about 30 estates within Lagos Axis alone. So, one of them could fit into your budget. At that point, you are not losing the customer because you could not buy estate A. If their budget fits into estate C, you then switch on to convincing them to buy estate C because that meets their budget. So, you can either use sentences like, oh, it seems like this is what you're saying, or it looks like, and then it helps you neutralize every negative effect and they help you to reinforce positive ones let's move quickly to the third one beware of yes 
master no beware of yes master no great negotiators actually seek no when people say no to you they drop their guard yes connotes submission yes implies that you have won why me have lost if i say yes to you but no puts you in control say hey are you coming for the party no they're just this feeling of oh yeah i'm in control of my time so you have to practice how to get no sometimes i ask questions so that the person can say no so rather than say hey are you coming for the party or i believe you are not coming for the party there's a way you ask the question you, you flip the question around i'll try and see and put some examples just see some examples in the course of a presentation now there are three types of yes there is the counterfeit yes there is confirmation yes and then there is commitment yes now counterfeit yes is that yes that is a pure lie but the person says it so that you can continue then there is confirmation yes it's not yes to say i'll buy from you it's just confirmation that yes what you have said is valuable but that does not mean i'll buy from you well finally the commitment yes commitment yes means come on tuesday i'll write you a check that's commitment yes now no could mean a whole lot no could mean i'm not ready to agree or you are making me feel uncomfortable i want more information no could mean a whole lot of things so when people say no to you don't just backtrack and run away ask why they have said no all right so master the art of saying no so just ask them oh by saying no do you mean abc all right let's move on quickly never ask for instance do you have a few minutes to talk the person will always say no i don't have a few minutes to talk rather say it's now a bad time to talk the person is going to first of all think that oh, okay if i say no then the person will continue if i say yes yes now is a bad time to talk the person is going to say okay so when is a good time all right so the second question is now a bad time to talk gives you the opportunity to now get a commitment later all right so let's go for number four shoot for that's right now that's right is not the same as you are right you are right simply means ah you are correct me i'm wrong implied but when you say oh that's right means two of you agree and once two of you agree it brings familiarity and once there's familiarity likeness and trust improves remember the five things you must do i told you at the beginning of the course you must get people to trust believe connect with you your product your company and you move their action threshold and their pain threshold that's right is way better than a yes or you are right so you have to strive for it the best way to strive for it is to use summary say so sir from everything we have said from the beginning of this conversation to now if i can summarize it you are saying you want to buy real estate in that equi axis however you want somewhere that's a dry land and meets a b c d criteria the person say yes that's right then you now continue so the next thing remember everything i've said from tactic one to tactic four because it will also help you further your tactic four now number five bend their reality people are driven by two motivators seeking pleasure or avoidance of pain now when you talk about compromise it's like wearing one brown shoe and one black shoe meeting halfway it means both sides would have lost so what you can do when you start your conversation start introducing deadlines here is what, something i do if someone asks for a discount i'll tell them that yes i'm going to give you a five percent discount if you are going to make your purchase between now and 31st of january once you add a timeline you become you have made that sale predictable once they miss the timeline you are justified to go back to your original price and if the person is coming back to you you introduce a shorter timeline a more stringent timeline so that this time they are going to make the purchase that's what i do i bend people's reality by introducing the element of pain when i do negotiations there is no such thing as a fair negotiation so always avoid the f word the fair word avoid it like a play don't say ah, this is not fair to us no don't say it if you say the word fair then you are insinuating that the person has treated you unjustly however if your counterpart uses the word fair immediately pause and ask them to say ah you just said i'm not treating you fairly oh could you please explain to me how i've mistreated you remember what i said be the mirror you are not politely painting what they have said to them in a more in a more deeper word say ah but this is not fair then you say oh how have i mistreated you now i'm ready to make make up amends 
if I've mistreated you. He said, no, I'm not saying you have mistreated me, just that your price is not fair. And I said, sir, could you explain to me how this price has in any way made you feel uncomfortable? So that word fair, you are trying to interpret it in ways that it's easier for them to come out of that hole. Remember, people will always risk to avoid loss than risk to make a gain. So target the pain threshold more than the gain threshold, all right? Then the next one is create an illusion of control. Illusion of control. Who has control in the conversation? The guy listening has the control in the conversation. So make sure the customer is the one talking. You are the one listening. Don't be the one to say, yeah, so this is our estate. It is, it is, it is. you are just talking, 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 talking. No, 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 don't do that. I have trained people on the act of communication such that when you are, t- keep quiet, let them talk. And then ask leading questions that will make them talk a bit more. The more people talk, the more, the more they hear the sound of their voice, the more they feel they are in control. But the person listening is the person that actually is in control. All right? Do not force the opponent to admit that you are right. Then avoid questions that can be answered with yes. Ask more how questions. Let me give you an example. So you can ask a question, so how am I supposed to do that? So if someone asks you, that, ah, you have to give me a significant discount. Otherwise, I, I, I can't continue with this. You say, sir, Okay, sir, could you please explain? Just help me to help you, sir. How am I supposed to give you that discount? If, if there are ways you can put it together so that I can take it back to management, but I can't just go and tell them that I want to give you discount. Just, if, can you explain some way? Or is there a way you can make it easier for me? What can you give me in return? You give them the control. So he is now the one explaining how you are going to give him a discount. So, okay, what you can do is you can say, I'm going to buy immediately. I'll pay 100% immediately. I will not spread the payment if you give me a 5% discount. But if you are not giving me any discount, I have to spread the payment. At that point, it becomes a win-win. All right? And then at every point in time, avoid the question, why? Why questions? So, sir, why have you not called me back? Why sounds accusatory? So I've been trying to reach you, but you've not picked my calls. Why? You don't ask that why questions. Make sure you calibrate your questions in a way that it doesn't feel that you are accusing your prospect. Then guarantee execution. Here's something that most negotiators don't do. Tell them that if you agree to this thing, here are the things I'm going to do. Guarantee it. All right? Guarantee it. Guarantee it. The counterpart. So, calibrated question, for instance, say the how questions are good. It helps you say no in the politest way possible. The contemporary will think they are in control by dictating to you how they will help you. Whereas, you're actually the one now getting help from them, knowing how exactly you are going to help them. All right? You have to guarantee execution. Another thing in terms of guaranteeing execution is use the 73855 rule. 7% of a message is based on words, 38% is based on tone of voice. 55% is based on body language. All right? Now, so you must know this. We've talked about this in an earlier module, so I will not f- spend so much time here. Use the rule of three. Get the customer to agree or say yes three times. So yes, beyond saying no, after you have moved beyond the stage of saying no, get them to say yes three at least three times in the negotiation so that they hear their voice saying yes at least three times. Then remember, liars use more words than normal. And then they use complex sentences. Once people start using complex sentences or third person pronouns, just know that you know the person is not being sincere. The next one is bargain hard. Hit it hard. Bargain hard. The guy across the table is not the problem. The situation is the problem. So bargain really hard. Identify your counterparty's negotiation style. Is it the accommodator? Is it the assertive? or the analyst you have to decide then even you for yourself which one are you so that you know how to agree on your zone of possible agreement then set boundaries and then at every point in time prepare a concession plan don't use even numbers use odd numbers 67 93 odd numbers 1231 odd numbers use all those type of odd numbers when you are doing concession then find the black swan there are three types of leverage the black swan is your leverage. There are three types of leverage. There's positive leverage, there is negative leverage, and then there is normative leverage. Positive leverage, ability to withhold your counterparts, what your counterpart wants. You have positive leverage. Negative leverage, the ability to make your counterparty suffer. 
while normative leverage is using your counterparty's norms and standards the person is a church person the person likes to obey their pastor then you now place a call to their pastor to place a call to them that's using normative leverage as a word you know so your black swan is your leverage make sure you find the black swan always take notes and then review your notes at every point in time i just put a picture of black swan see how adorable the black swan is so question does this ever work these negotiation techniques do they ever work the answer is yes when i was working in an investment banking firm this is an email the first one the guy said banks called by middle name, banks good morning this isn't what was agreed at yesterday's meeting my colleague will send you the recording of the meeting for reference we will not pay more, not more than six hundred thousand, whereas they were owing around four million they gave other reasons throwing it back at us whereas that was not the true situation and then about a month later you can check the dates about a month later you can see after practicing these negotiation skills on a bank executive he now wrote remember the first time he called me banks no salutation but after we had practiced these negotiation skills on him he called me dear banks and then finally he agreed to pay 65 percent of the four million which is way beyond 600k so the same person that said they would not pay more than 600k agreed to pay 65 percent of the bill so it shows you that these things actually work i've used it before and i've put evidences for you to see from the same person and the same mail trail all right so these things actually work so superior negotiation skills part three i have put a checklist for you to just read through before you go for negotiations these are the questions that you must answer in terms of checklist to make sure that you are well prepared and that's the end of the presentation thank you very much all right so let's be sure that you learned there is a link in the description of the course in mo for module six you know once you click on it you can answer 10 questions and then that will be your last quiz the next presentation will just be about you how important you are in the sales equation thank you very much